Hey, what's up, nerds? It's Paul here at Radio Free Hammer Hall. Today, we're going to do a little bit of a dive into the current metagame for 3rd Edition Age of Sigmar, now that we are two months into this new edition. So, just a few items that I want to hit right off the top that are sort of uh, interfering with the results that we currently have. As I said, we're only two months into a new edition, and all of this data is just based on two months of tournaments. COVID-19 is still a problem globally, so there have been fewer tournaments than we'd like to see. Certain regions have been completely absent from the tournament scene due to lockdowns, and a lot of practice games have not necessarily been happening um, You know that flow into these tournaments to get more refined lists and all of those sorts of things. There's also been delays in the production cycle. So there are books and army releases that have been pushed back for at least a month, if not more. Uh, those are you know, potentially things that are going to impact the metagame pretty significantly. We know we have... Uh, you know, the uh, new orcs that are um, without a battle tome right now. And they're going to be included in the orc war clans battle tome. There's a new one that's going to be coming out. So we can kind of say they're included in there. But as for the moment, they're really sort of not represented um, in the data anywhere. Just because they're kind of almost not really a real army at the moment. Stormcast Eternal is also getting a new book uh, within the next month or so, and then we have a rumored Chaos Battle Tome release coming up in October or November that uh, could potentially shake things up pretty significantly as well. With the release of a new edition, we've had multiple FAQ drops. We've had three now that um, have changed how armies play, how war scrolls play, and may have interfered with some of these results, and we don't have um, a majority of the results yet that are after all of the FAQs have been dropped. And just a note, shout out to AOS Shorts for compiling all of this metagame data and providing it out here to the public. Wanted to make sure that uh, I gave credit where credit was due here. Um, Dan's doing a lot of fine work over there at AOS Shorts getting this information out there. So make sure you go over and check him out uh, on the web as well as on Twitter to see all of this data as it flows out. So getting into the actual armies and results that we have so far. Sons of Bayamat is currently our leader. If we're looking at things from the perspective of finishes with four or more wins, that seems to be the new benchmark that people are using. Um, they account for 13% of the four plus win finishes. But note here that they're also really underrepresented in the five and O cohort. They're, um, only about 7% of the 5 and O's. So they definitely have some kryptonite hanging out out there that is really doing them in pretty severely, but they're really dominating that 4-1 bracket. Um, out of the top six armies in total, they comprise about 59% of the four plus win finishes. So that's Sons of Banat, Lumineth Realm Lords, Daughters of Cain, Seraphon, Zinch, and Soulblight Grave Lords, and I defy you to find a common thread that goes through all six of those. I don't know. Um, that's uh, one of the things we'll be talking about later. Um, out of all of the finishes that we have of four plus wins, there's 142 four plus finishes, and every single army out of all of the 25 armies are represented in that category. Um, several of them only have one finish in the four plus win category, um, but that's okay. They're all being represented in there in 
you know, a limited number of tournaments over two months after a new edition drops. That I think is pretty strong overall. And we've got 16 different armies out of 25. So more than half of our armies are showing up with a 5-0 finish. Um, our bottom five armies currently are Flesh Eater Quartz, Ossiarch Bone Reapers, Gloom Spike Gits, Night Haunt, and Beasts of Chaos. Each of those only appearing once in the 4 plus win list, although it is important to note that the Bone Reapers and Flesh Eater Quartz finishes in the 4 plus category are 5 O's. So, although they have not shown up frequently, they really um, came in hitting hard. So, Overall, there is a really interesting spread going on here. I think the health of the meta right now is really strong. We have a wide, wide spread of armies that are putting up strong finishes. Every army clearly has a chance to put up strong results. Uh, as we've seen, every army put up at least one for one finish. And... Um, most of the army is putting up a 5-0 at some point. Um, the results across different armies don't really show any common path to victory. Um, so although you know you have different armies, if you start looking at the armies and grouping them together, there's not really a clear pattern as to a strategy or list composition that's really the common denominator there that is uh, a path to victory. Everybody is really kind of doing it their own different way. There are problematic war scrolls that have been noted like Archeon and uh, uh, Gotrek and uh, Marathi and others. Uh, basically all the big bad gods and demigods um, although those are common in the lists that perform well they're definitely not an auto win button they're there but they're not uh, dominating all of these tournaments you know your the 5-0 tournament results are not like all Archeon and Marathi and Gotrek you know there's other things in there that are strong that are not using those you know and in particular you have armies like lumineth that can really just take down archeon or can take down mega gargants and it's not that big of a deal for them so um i think the diversity is really there both in just the sheer diversity of armies as well as the diversity of play styles and paths to victory so the common denominator that seems to be sitting there right now as i see it is list building and uh strong play so good players and good lists are winning games and that's the way it should be. I think the rules in third edition really lend themselves more towards better players doing better. Um, the uh, things like priority roles, I think, are less important now that we have battle tactics and grand strategies involved. It really is a lot of pre-planning and... Uh, playing to your strengths and figuring out the right tactics to use at the right time that really are determining who the winner of a lot of these games are, as well as the difference in scoring in a lot of the missions lets there be a lot less of like runaway victories. Um, and even when you have your army significantly like whittled down, it definitely is possible to still have a strong army and uh, really be able to put out a, a good performance. So, with that, that's about all I've got on the current metagame. As I said, it's all looking pretty positive right now, and goes right back to my general philosophy of playing what you love and, uh, you know, building the best things that you can with what you have available, 
learn to play it well and you should do well you should be putting up winning records by you know simply being experienced in playing well with uh what you put together as always don't forget to like and subscribe for more and turn on your notifications to find out when our new videos get posted you can support us down below on patreon as well as joining us on facebook and twitter that is all guys i'll talk to you all later